So I recently had the opportunity to review the movie Alive Who from Metropolis Magazine and subsequently and subsequently got to spend 45 minutes interviewing Keiichi Satia with the help of Hiroshi Kaicho Takahashi. If you like drifting and aren't already following him, you should. He's one of the longest running 8.6 drifters in the world and generally a very cool guy. His YouTube is Running Free 8.6 and I think his Instagram is as well. If for some reason you've been living under a rock for the past few months, Alive Hoon is the first movie about drifting as a sport ever. No. No. Stop. That one doesn't count. It came out in Japan this past June and is scheduled for an international release sometime next year. It's not surprising then that Drift King himself had a hand in the film. When I was talking to the director for cinematography, he mentioned that Keiichi Suchiya was adamant that the, car, that the movie be filmed with real cars doing real drifting, real Japanese drifters in Japan. And no CG of any kind at all. None. Which basically means this movie was filmed in much the same way a big budget YouTube channel might do it. So when you watch the film, think about that. As an aspiring videographer, to me that's positively inspiring. I would love to film drifting like that one day. But he said he lost five drones and 10 cameras during filming. Like, comment, subscribe. Naturally, when he said Suchia, my eyebrows popped up. As a longtime fan and someone who grew up watching Initial D, I of course asked for an interview. It took some back and forth, but I managed to get him on FaceTime while he was at an event advertising for the show. There was one problem though. He doesn't speak English. And my Japanese is probably equivalent to a four-year-old. Not exactly professional. Enter my buddy, Angelo. Now Angelo is actually a bit of a local legend himself. You can check out Samit's video of his S14 swapped G35. You can check out Robbie Nisha's video of his Hachiroku swapped Alteza, or you can check out Kaito's videos, Hachiroku swapped Alteza. Or really, you can check any of my track videos because Angelo's in most of them. Anyway, Angelo gets around, so it turns out he's actually really good friends with Kaicho, and Kaicho offers to translate. Are you kidding me? I get the chance to interview two of the most legendary 8-6 drifters of all time ever. So I wipe the drool off my face and I reach out to Kaicho. We did a few dry runs, we got to know each other a little bit, and after a few days, I figured we were good to go. Except DK was only available on the day that my wife is supposed to have our second child. So I had to do a priority check. Yep, DK first. Moving on. Sorry, honey. No! No! All right. Now obviously you can't interview a celebrity like this without some stipulations. I had to send the questions ahead of time. I had a very strict time limit. I actually blew it. And I couldn't record the interview. Which sucks because it would have made very good B-roll for this video. I'll say this. I don't think DK actually cared about the plot of the movie at all. As a matter of fact, when I asked him what his personal goal was when being involved in this movie, he said he just wants to spread drifting to as many people as possible on an international scale. Drift missionary. I think drifting has become part of his identity, not just how the world perceives him, but in how he perceives himself. If you're not familiar with the life wound, the whole plot of the movie is that there's a down and out drift team who, in a desperate attempt to fight irrelevancy, hires Japan's number one sim racer. So naturally I asked DK if these simulators, are they realistic? How real is it really? Perhaps unsurprisingly, he responded that the simulators are good for practice for professionals and they're a great way for people who don't actually have access to drifting to, to get a taste of the fun. But the real thing is quite a bit different. That sentiment's actually reflected in the movie quite a bit. One thing that stuck out to me about him specifically is he was a lot nicer than I expected him to be. Now, that could be because he's that much of a professional or it could be because I had Kaicho with me and they kind of know each other. Or maybe he's just that cool. But celebrities, you can never really tell. One thing that was very clear to me though is that drifting is very near to his heart. Next up, I'm gonna talk about what Akira Nakai-san is really like. You can look at that video here, unless I haven't made it yet. And then there's gonna be something else here. But come back, it'll be there. Right there. Did you know Nakai had an 862?